Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to an abbreviated version of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dykes. Today is Friday, April 27, 2012. Now, it's the best of times. It's the worst of times. Tyranny's coming in like a flood, but there's no denying the power of resistance on the free Internet. That's why they want to clamp it down. That's why the House passed the CISPA bill last night, 248 to 148. It's headed for the Senate. That's why Kurt Nemo from InfoWars and other writers have urged people to call Congress, tell them, no, no, hell no, we don't want this Fourth Amendment Constitution-destroying Cybersecurity Act. We don't want new national security powers for the government, which are incredibly hard to roll back because everything is hidden behind that so-called pretext that, oh, it's for national security. We must must clamp down on the web. We must be able to shut down people without even having due process. We must be able to close dissidents. Now, Obama has promised to veto this legislation if it reaches his desk, but we've heard this song and dance before. Recall, of course, the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, which included a provision allowing indefinite detention of Americans without any due process. Obama pretended to be against it while Senator Carl Levin revealed the fact it was his administration who had put the language into the bill. Later, Obama signed it under the cover of night on New Year's Eve when everyone was partying, no one was paying attention. The only people to cover it were places like the Drudge Report and here at InfoWars. Dot com. So we've got to stop the CISPA thing, and if Obama says he's going to veto CISPA, we have to make him veto it because we can't allow the free web to be destroyed. And even if that happens, we have to continue to fight back. Meanwhile, Houston's revolt against TSA on the buses. You heard two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, about Sheila Jackson Lee, the representative in Congress, uh, members of TSA, and the Metro Department there in Houston saying they were going to bring on secret undercover agents to randomly check bags and uh, spot out terrorism, blah, blah, blah. Instead, they got a tongue lashing last night as dozens of activists, prominent lawyers, and other figures in Houston chastised the Metro Department at their board meeting, telling them how unconstitutional the measure is and how nobody wanted these bus and train checks, even though TSA and Homeland Security are trying to roll them out and expand them all across the country. And they put the Metro board so much on the defensive that the president and chairman, George Grineas, promised warrantless bag searches would not occur, certainly not while he was chair of the board, although the police chief of the Metro Department told ABC 13 last week that he does have the right to search your bag and may tell his officers to do it. It's good we pushed them back, but they are a very deceptive den of vipers. Speaking of vipers, the Viper team, uh, which is part of this TSA security rollout, has gotten new congressional funding. They're going to expand from some 9,000 checkpoints out. They're doing random searches everywhere. You've seen the coverage of it. This is coming, and it's good to see places like Houston saying no. Now, on this particular issue, they've been twice over deceptive about their announcements to the public. Just recently, the police chief Rodriguez for the Metro Department added a correction to their press release saying that although random bag check were suggested at the planning meeting and mentioned here in the press release, they decided before the operation not to do the strategy. Of course, it's not actually just an operation. It's an ongoing operation. And they've been twice over deceptive right here in their own press release is a correction they put out, I think, yesterday from Metro Chief Rodriguez saying, although random bag checks were suggested at the planning meeting and mentioned here in the press release, they decided before the operation, which is actually ongoing and not a one-time deal, not to employ the strategy. Even though it says here, participating agencies will ride buses, perform random bag checks, conduct canine sweeps that place uniform and plain clothes undercover officers at the transit centers, etc. But they were even more deceptive. The Houston Freethinkers, uh, Derek Bros, who was at the board meeting and was quoted about how unconstitutional it is, first exposed and brought it to our attention as well that when they announced it and Sheila Jackson Lee and others had their big press release and said how great it was, when they put out that press release, it had the deceptive title, Metro rolls out bicycles and bus racks for 2012 bike to work day. In other words, ensuring that no one would read it, at least not for the, those reasons. 
Uh, but anyway, a partial victory. As they are well aware, the public is completely fed up with the TSA at airports and certainly will not embrace them when they enter into general society as they're being phased in more and more. Another victory as the Labor Department is now saying it will withdraw the rule that would ban child labor on farms, et cetera, after the Daily Caller exposed it, after the Drudge Report exposed it, after InfoWars exposed it, and others. A lot of farmers speaking out against this, getting the attention of their congressmen, and et cetera. The ban would have placed prohibition of employment on country grain elevators, grain bins, silos, feedlots, stockyards, livestock exchanges, livestock auctions, and a whole lot more. <clears throat> And it would have prevented kids from learning valuable skills. And it's just part of the overall clampdown on American life, on America's economy, and our own independence within the country as they try to centrally plan everything under the larger United Nations Agenda 21 program. They've set up the Oceans Council. We talked about that. They've set up the Rural Council under Obama's administration. He just signed the executive order putting this into place. And what happened when they did central planning in all those communist countries? Well, Stalin did it and they starved some 12 million Ukrainians. Uh, you heard about people like Castro bragging how it's a record harvest this year under our great central planning communist system and then actually people starved to death. Uh, the Russians poisoned a lot of their soil under the Soviet years and on and on and it won't be good here in the U.S. either. It'll probably be even more deceptive and evil under the United Nations program and look how they branched it off. The rural council includes unrelated departments like Department of Defense, Secretary of Labor, Secretary of Transportation, of State, etc. And they've broken down ways they're going to control the family farm through this. Labor just tried the child rule here, which gladly they fought back against. Uh, the EPA was also handed down when they tried to ban dust from farms and use the EPA to clamp down on farms. Transportation last year tried to clamp down on farms by requiring a commercial driver's license to operate tractors and similar machinery. This whole whole thing is a really bad idea and it's just un-American and we're glad that small part of it got fought back against. There's more to fight back against now. We take you now to a special Ron Paul interview that our crew got last night during a speaking engagement here in Austin, Texas. And Ron Paul, of course, is not afraid to talk about issues like false flag and how one might be used to start the next war or wars or regional war, World War III, et cetera, and hinted pretty broadly at the use of ships as a, another kind of Gulf of Tonkin, sinking of the USS, Lusitania type pretext for starting a war with the or what have you. Let's roll that clip now. They do the same thing with foreign policy. They come along and they don't talk about non-intervention and minding our own business. They say, oh, you guys are a bunch of isolationists. You don't want to talk to anybody. But guess what? The very people who tell us that we're the isolationists are the ones who are always looking around for another enemy to slay and put on sanctions to start another war. They're the ones who don't want to trade with Cuba. We're the ones that think that it's time to engage in the world and to talk to people and trade with people. So they will try to paint us as uncaring. But let me tell you, people who care will care about liberty. And uh, this, this will never translate into an absolute majority, but I, I am, I'm certain that our numbers are growing by leaps and bounds. These prairie fires of uh, freedom are being spread, and there's nothing but good news out there, precariously so because we don't know exactly. We may have something happen. There may be a false flag uh, incident where some, some uh, ship goes down and you be used for the excuse to accelerate the next war. And um, we have to learn to distinguish war propaganda from the truth. Dr. Paul, today's headline story on Infowars.com is about how the government is planning to secretly evacuate Chicago during the upcoming NATO summit in May. Do you have any comments about that? I haven't seen that, but uh, I don't know exactly what's behind all that. But uh, that, that kind of no, those kind of those kind of statements concern me. Could there be potentially another false flag event? I'm always worried about false flags. We got to get going. Sir.
And he was alluding to reports such as about the ship, the USS Enterprise, which they're sending over there right before it's to be decommissioned. A lot of people speculating if they did a false flag with the giant ship, that would be the one to go with. Who knows what could happen? They could pull any trick out of the hat, but they like to advance that agenda and distract the public, of course, from other important issues. And by the way, yet again, another rally where Ron Paul consistently drew thousands to his crowd, while Romney still is only getting a few hundred. I think they estimated 4,000 people last night in Austin. Of course, Ron Paul's had uh, audiences upwards of 10, 12,000 just at regular speaking events. Anyway, Anyway, another speaking event. I was there. Rob Dew was there. I thought it was even better than Alex's speech in Dallas, and that is the speech in Orlando at the Highlight Center there. And there were at least a uh, thousand, I think even 1,100 rabid fans there as well. Now you could be there too. We're going to air that speech in full right here. Thanks for watching the Infowars Nightly News. We'll be back again next week with more hard hitting information. Please don't forget to support us at PrisonPlanet.tv and let's beat these bastards. Let me introduce you to one of the top talk guys in America. Welcome, Alex Jones. It's station owners and managers and program directors like Carl that have got the courage to put out my hardcore message that are helping us awaken this nation. Carl, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Carl, Carl and over a hundred plus stations have taken the risk to bet on liberty and freedom and had great success. The truth is the sleeping giant that is America, that is the American people of every race, color, creed, religion who love liberty, and the sleeping giant that is humanity is unstoppable when we stand up and take action. The people want freedom. And it's time to stop apologizing for demanding our basic liberty, our private property, and our families. All you control free criminals, get the hell out of our way! This is our country, we're free human beings, we're the people that built this civilization, and you New World Order control freaks are a bunch of parasites, and your time has come! Oh, man, it gets me fired up. I can feel the energy of a thousand plus people. Fifty plus years they've had this great facility here at the Orlando High Line. This is the first time it's been at total capacity. And why is that? Because freedom is popular. Now, I don't usually give speeches with notes. But this one, I got four pages of them, and I'll go over some of these points I want to make. And a lot of them you've heard, some you haven't, but certainly not put together the way it is. This represents, and what I do on the radio, and what I do on the nightly news, and everything I do, represents what I believe reality to be. I'm 100% genuine. I stand for what I believe. And my only attribute is that I've done the research, and I'm not a coward, and I'll tell the truth. And that's why I don't like people praising me. We're all in this together. We're all under attack by this tyranny, by this democide that's death by government. Enslavement by government is tyranny. We're all in this together. I don't deserve praise or thanks for what I'm doing. I don't deserve praise or thanks if they kill me. It is up to all of us our duty to stand up against corruption for our children and future generations. I'm doing what must be done. That's an important distinction. Because if people take somebody like Alex Jones and put me up on a pedestal as some amazing, great person for what I'm doing, you, people are missing the entire point. I'm doing what you're supposed to do. I'm doing the, me the, the minimum, which is maximum resistance to tyrants, thugs, criminals, and scum. Free humanity needs to stand up against corruption. Free humanity needs to take the field and occupy this planet because if good people do nothing, the corrupt 
take over and this world goes to hell in a handbasket. That, that is the blueprint to defeat the new world order, is to know our enemy, but to also know who we are and know what the stakes are and understand it is our responsibility to stand up against these people. And listen, standing up against corruption is not a heavy burden. That's when you really start living, is when you don't take crap anymore. And I'm talking about taking crap from powerful. It's good to take crap from your kids, your wife, your husband, and not fight with each other, and realize you're on a team. Because the only people you can guarantee care about you at the end of the day is your family and your friends, and that's what real value is, not a bunch of NFL, NBA, Hollywood garbage. They want to teach us to give up our souls and our lives and our money for a bunch of crap when real value is all around us. Honor, love, duty, beauty, art, innocence, creativity, courage. That's what it's all about. Not all this New World Order poison they try to force feed us. I haven't even gotten into the notes yet. It's, <laughs> I got to hold them up here to be able to read them because it's dark down here. Nice dramatic setup. I like this place. And I can feel your energy. I want to say this. I want to thank you for being here and thank you for caring and thank you for bringing us here. I want to thank you because this is special for people that really know what's going on, people that are really aware of the facts and have broken the mind control to get together. The solution to defeating the New World Order is right here in this auditorium. This, this, this 1,100 strong against tyranny because the truth is we're not some 300 against a million people. If you go everywhere across this globe, everywhere, people are awake to tyranny. But we individually don't know that because most of you aren't known on the street. You aren't TV host or radio host or authors. So you feel like you're alone. Let me give you the report. As someone who is well known, I can be in Costa Rica, I can be in England, I can be in Canada, I can be on a farm to market road in South Texas and people stop their cars, they come up to me, I can't go to the mall, I can't go to a movie, I can't go anywhere, and it's not every 20th person coming up to me like it was 10 years ago, it's every third or fourth. What does that tell you about freedom and the awakening? I can go to any town or city in the United States and get 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people out without doing any advertising on establishment, corporate, prostitutes, sellout, globalist media. They're a paper tiger. They've run out of blood. They're out of bullets. They're nothing but a bunch of bark. They can get us individually, but they can't get an idea. And I am such an individual that I know the power of individuals with like minds, the individualistic collective of an idea. We can crawl over these people and we can politically rip their arms and legs right out like you were pulling a piece of grass out of the ground. That's why they're scared of you. That's why they're massing all this force against us. Because we know we're an unstoppable force that can just reach in and crush them anytime we want to. I'm not thinking about defeating the New World Order. I'm committed to it. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to see the promised land, but I can assure you, if humanity commits to this, we will defeat these people. As their system of dehumanization and total control comes in, every click of their success is one inch closer to their downfall. As people see the fruits of these global tyrants, as people see the product of what they create, everyone is going to turn against them. And they hope they can shut down the alternative media. They hope they can shut you up or make you feel powerless so that you just crawl off in a ditch. They hope they can bankrupt our economies so we're so dependent on them and working so hard we can't resist them. But once humanity is awakened, staring, which it is, 
And then once humanity is aware of exactly what's transpired, there is no putting it back in the barn. No putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. No putting the genie back in the bottle. The train has already left the station and the globalists aren't arrogant like they were 10 years ago. They are scared to death because they've committed so many crimes. The ones we know of are in the hundreds of thousands and off the charts. And every day we learn more of just how sick it is and how disgusting and how we have let the worst people into control. And they're scared because they know what they've done. And they know they can blow stuff up and blame it on whoever they want, but it doesn't work anymore. They know we're watching. They know that if we see something, we say something to our community, not to the terrorists that stage 9-11. Now, I want to talk about something really positive because when we did question and answer in Dallas, there was like six or seven, eight, I don't know, people that came up and said, and, and they were mainly young, they said, I, I, I was going to have to, I was going to die. I had this disease, that disease. I stopped drinking sodium fluoride. I stopped drinking aspartame. I stopped taking vaccines. I started trying to eat organic. I started taking vitamin and mineral powders. And all of a sudden, this disease is gone, that disease is gone, because the system doesn't want to tell you why you have the problem. They want to treat the problem once you have it. And, and I, my talk in Dallas wasn't even about uh, these issues, but, 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 but speaker after speaker was, was bringing this up. And I was talking to the crew tonight, people that know Aaron and, and Rob Dew and Richard from, from the radio and TV show. People were coming up saying, yeah, I had lupus. And they were telling me I'd have to have all this stuff done. And I finally started taking vitamins and minerals. And all of a sudden, it's gone. And again, that's not saying in every case that would do that. The point is the system knows about real solutions that are sitting in front of you. And so the, the blueprint to defeat the New World Order is really just about waking up. And waking up doesn't mean subscribing to what Alex Jones thinks. Waking up uh, doesn't mean believing everything I'm saying. It means simply not trusting everything that's put in front of you. And, and it, it simply means investigating and learning how things work. And that sounds like a bunch of work, but it's not. It's exciting to learn how the world works. It's exciting to get knowledge. And the more knowledge you get, the more it intensifies. You don't want to just get your knowledge from a wild man like Alex Jones, and I know you don't. Look at all the guests I have on. Look at all the news we post, all the legislation, all the government documents. It's about you having the journey of experience right along with me and adding information and calling in. That's what the solution is about, is valuing research, valuing being informed, valuing communicating with your fellow humans, that electronic and physical soapbox. That's a big part of defeating this new world order. But I've seen this term, and I want to make a bumper sticker of it, because for the last few months, reading comments on InfoWars.com and on YouTube, I keep seeing, InfoWars saves lives. And it was different commenters saying it. You know, my mother was going blind and, and diabetes and all this, and she finally got off the aspartame. And six months later, she, you know, she, she's got most of her eyesight back and doesn't have diabetes you know, uh, anymore. Her sugar's to the proper level. And it's like, wow, th there it is. Just because I have some doctor or scientist or brain surgeon or epidemiologist or endocrinologist on explaining, they know all this. This is in all the studies. They know it. InfoWars saves lives. And InfoWars isn't my little website, InfoWars.com. InfoWar is saying the pen is mightier than the sword. Your voice is mightier than the sword. Long before we talk about going to arms against the government and the corrupt elements that have taken it over, we should exhaust every avenue of information. And that doesn't mean just wishing there was some media out there you could support. That means becoming your own media, doing your own local radio show, starting your own podcast, doing your own YouTube channel. Doesn't matter if it's got 10 views the first time or a thousand. That's how every great journey is begun. The, the blueprint to defeat the new world order is free humanity standing up and saying, for too long we have turned over our society to the worst elements, and humanity is awakening and assessing the situation and standing up, and humanity is on the march for our future.
Carl Rove, I think it was 2005 or so, 2006, you can pull it up. Carl Rove, We Control Reality, and you'll pull up the original articles. And the reporters are all, but you've been caught lying about this and that, and, and, and they're all standing around him at a cocktail party, the so-called elitist, and he disdainfully looked at them. The only reason they all reported on it is because they like thinking they're the insiders and they're conning the public. They didn't like having him say, you're a bunch of trash, you're a bunch of stupid scum, and laughing at him. But Karl Rove looked at him and he said, it doesn't matter if we lie or tell the truth, and this is all quoted by multiple papers, because we control reality, we and the elite are history's actors, and we'll change our story day to day, and then you will dutifully go and report that change in reality, because you do whatever we say, we control reality. And Karl Rove could tell him that because he knows they'll just lose their jobs if they don't do what he wants. It was all about that disdain. Well, let me tell Karl Rove and the rest of these globalist murderers something. You don't control reality, you arrogant, prideful little piece of garbage. Pride goeth before the fall. It is going to be their own hubris that is going to bring down the globalist. It is going to be their arrogance that will defeat them. Never, never misunderstand my confidence, focus, and anger for pride or arrogance. I hate pride and I hate arrogance. I am fueled by love and by anger and by determination. That is not pride. That is necessity. You try to wake up a lot of people politically and they've already got their little fake New World Order version, left, right, whatever it is, you know, talking points they regurgitate trying to sound smart. And they think you're bringing up politics because you're acting cool and showing off to them and they'll try to spar with you. I just go, you know what, I'm not playing games with you. This is some serious stuff. You like this country shutting down? You are being warned. And that gets through to people because it cuts through. Hey, I'm not, this isn't a game for me, man. I'm humbly taking my time out to tell you about something. For heaven's sakes, at least listen to what I'm saying. Now I'll start trying to get into the speech a little bit here. <laughs> I'll tell you, I really can't wait to get to your questions because those are always so great. Uh, continuing here, if Richard is in the building who's doing everything on this trip, Richard's doing the job of three or four people, uh, can I have a glass of water, Richard? Thank you. All right, continuing here, because I yelled and screamed a little too much today already. <laughs> uh, people think it's like, my radio voice? That's from screaming too much. Everybody wonders why these old guys, in the old days, the radio voice sounded like this. That was old guys, been on the radio 40 years, drinking Jack Daniels and smoking cigarettes. And I've, I've, I've been, in the day, I guess I had a few of those too, but I got like an 80 year old guy voice at 38. All right, continuing here, ladies and gentlemen, going over these points that I have here, and, and then later I'm going to do something different in the speech. I'm going to let people shout out topics the last 20 minutes or so that you want me to you know, give you a comment on, and then I'll do what no one else can do. I'll interrupt my own speech that way. Anyways, I figured out a way to do it. Now, I mean, I've already talked about this. We are winning, we are having big effects. We do have the power, and it's in that realization that we win. In fact, the other day when I was writing this speech before I left uh, Austin, or just these points I wanted to go over, it's not really a speech, it's, it's just points, you know, little data points to remind me of what I wanted to cover. I had trouble stopping on all the successes that we've had against corruption when we take action. Look at Congress getting in big trouble now for insider trading. That's been going on for decades, now being exposed. Look at the success we're having all over the world. Governments are admitting that carbon taxes are a scam to shut down certain industries and raise taxes on the general public and shut down our industrial society to a great extent. Carbon taxes and the whole fake UN environmental movement that could care less about the environment is burning down in flames. It is irrevocably wrecked, and that is incredibly positive. Ron Paul, a decade ago, couldn't get one 
Yeah. Ron Paul, a decade ago, could not get one co-sponsor to audit the Federal Reserve. Last year, it passed the House, went to the Senate, they changed it, sent it back to the House. They killed it procedurally and, and, and passed a whitewash. But the point is, we've gone from no one, except maybe one out of a thousand 15 years ago or so, knowing the Federal Reserve is a private offshore bank corporation run by a big banking organized crime syndicate on record. No one even knew that. In fact, they would say you were a conspiracy theorist if it was private. Remember, I mean, I remember 12 years ago, reporters calling up laughing at me from major newspapers and going, Mr. Jones, you think the Federal Reserve's private and there's big mega banks going to take over and set up a world government? And they laugh at me. Look at how today all of this is now out in the open. Well, it is a world government run by big mega banks. And they are getting rid of the freedom in Europe and they are installing the presidents and prime ministers, but the Economist magazine and others say they're the experts. I mean, this isn't like Mussolini or Stalin. This is a, the bankers. So again, everything we talked about now happened because we were reading their own documents. Everything we discussed is now unfolding. And so our credibility is rising. Your credibility is rising. People that laughed at you five, 10 years ago, they're not gonna laugh now. Look at our unprecedented success that we've had with Ron Paul and G. Edward Griffin and myself and, and so many of you out there. I mean, I was talking to folks that were bringing speakers here in the 19, early 1990s, covering these topics here in Orlando and talking to crowds of, you know, 100 people. And now look, we're talking to 1,100. We could have probably got a bigger venue and done some advertising and had 3,000. The point is that we're growing exponentially and they can't shut all of us down. And as more people within the system begin to awaken, as more people realize they don't have a stake. There are a lot of sociopaths and corrupt people that serve the system because they think they've gotten on the bandwagon with the winning team. They're starting to figure out the New World Order doesn't have a place for them at the table. They're starting to figure out they got conned. They're starting to figure out, wow, all this is true. They're not just going along with some good old boys and some corruption. They're going along with something really evil that's going to destroy their future and their children's future, and they're getting reality real fast. And if you think people are starting to wake up now, just wait. If the new world order doesn't get backed off and starts going into the next phase, oh, there's a reason they're setting up secret police and intimidation and saying, yeah, we'll arrest citizens. We'll secretly drag you off into a black hole. We'll execute you secretly, trying to scare those of us that are awake because they're scared. They're all gonna go to prison that run this system if we take America back and kick these criminals out. So the private Federal Reserve is now sitting there. They can't, even the establishment mouthpieces admit it's private now. Well, it is private, but they know how to run things better. And they know how to give themselves trillions of your tax money and then loan it back to you at 30% and tell you how lucky you are. These are good guys. They're nice people. You see, every day they're more revealed. Every day you wake somebody up, you warn somebody, you pass on a DVD, you call into talk radio, you call into C-SPAN. Every day is another little cut, cut, cut. Cut. The New World Order is bleeding out in front of all of us, and we're getting stronger by the minute. The fight between good and evil, between right and wrong, is always going back and forth. People say, yeah, we had a victory, but they just came right back with the legislation again. That's right. That's the nature of life. You got your kids to do the homework that night, but they wouldn't do it the next day. It was, a, you know, you know, you had to drive through traffic and go to work and bust your butt and do all this, and it was tough. You had to do it again and again and again. That's what life is. And in a fight for freedom, in a fight against a bunch of control freaks that want to run your life because they love it, you're going to have to fight them every day. You're going to have to fight them really hard because for a long time, a bunch of people thought, well, America's perfect. America, we don't have to worry about stuff here. 
history doesn't repeat itself here. Let's all just go to sleep. And now we've been usurped, we've been taken over, and it's time to clean house. I mean, every time I talk about one solution, I think about all of the other successes we've had. The good report I can give you, because for as bad as things are, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So look at the In the Fed movement. Look at Ron Paul overall. He was not a front runner four years ago. I would not come on air four years ago and look at all the polls, the numbers, the elections, and say that he was ever even in third place. Ron Paul has been in first place the entire time. And I've gone over the data long before the media is forced to report it. Iowa, Maine, South Carolina, Nevada, all stolen in front of everybody. Two states have suspended the election. But say, we're not going to say what we do now that we admit it's a fraud and Ron Paul really won. But Romney and Santorum are still the winners. But just don't worry, we're not, yes, we didn't count these counties, Ron Paul won. Yes, we, but just forget about it. Forget about it. That's what they say, just, just move along. So you're like, but wait a minute, Ron Paul's really in first place? Ron Paul won all the straw polls, you know, exit polls show he's winning everywhere. That's terrible. He's in first place, but they stole it from him. First, he runs four years ago and educates people, creates a quadre of larger group awake to the private Federal Reserve globalist crime takeover. He runs four years later, becomes the front runner, is the real winner, would be our president in every Gallup poll, destroys Obama better than anybody. And, and they're going to probably steal the election from him. But we've gone from him not being front runner to the real front runner, and now they got to steal it in front of everybody. How big of an educational experience is that going to be? Hmm? You see, resistance is victory. Every time we get in the ring, even if they cheat and win, everybody's watching. Everybody's getting wise by getting in the arena, by going into that rigged game in a boxing match where they got two tire irons in their hands, beating us in the head, and we're almost beating them. Everybody's rooting for us. People ask, why haven't they killed Alex Jones? They've tried to kill my name. They've tried to destroy my credibility. They've tried to do it all, but the system knows they kill people like me or Ron Paul. It underlines, it highlights, it exclamation points everything we've said. And they still might do it, or some nut could, but whatever the case is, I love life so much that it isn't even in the equation because I'm totally committed to beating these people because they've got to be beaten. The truth is, all this worldly, empty scum is weak and scared. These people are so weak, these globalists, these sellouts, the minions of this system, that they, they, they are totally obsessed with how they look, what people think about them, with fake status, they get off on it. They are living an illusion. They are the most vapid, unhappy people ever. And as we, in the liberty movement, gain steam, more and more of them are going to basically defect. And that's our problem. The emperor does not have any clothes. Because then they'll try to get us to compromise. We cannot compromise with corruption and despotism. That is what has gotten us to this point. Continuing with solutions. I've got almost a paragraph down here. Then I'll race to the rest of it later. <clears throat> Look at how 15 years ago or so, you couldn't find organic food anywhere unless it was some hole in the wall health food store. Now, all the major grocery stores are trying to imitate the big mega whole foods places. And they're trying to come in and actually adulterate and infiltrate that. And people are like, well, we demand organic, so they changed the guidelines, so they could feed us GMO. Exactly. We start winning on that front, they counterattack. We fight back. 
they counterattack. We fight back. We're pushing them back on the victim disarmament front of the Second Amendment, on every issue. The numbers show we are turning the tide and the system is panicking and that's why they're so dangerous right now. They are so freaked out that all the trendies and people are waking up and buying firearms. I gotta tell you, every liberal I've known, so-called so liberal, is becoming a real liberal. Because a real liberal is like Thomas Jefferson, wants freedom, wants the Second Amendment, wants property rights, wants individual freedom, make your own choices, let others live like they wanna live. And what's happening is liberals are discovering real classical liberalism. And conservatives are discovering classical liberalism. And they're discovering that they've been given a fake tyrannical version. I love these talk show hosts who I hear from national hosts are saying, I heard this this week, get rid of posse commentatus, get rid of habeas corpus, arrest anyone who's against an Iran attack get rid of the Bill of Rights, that will protect us. I mean, I'm hearing just absolute tyranny because they're freaking out. Uh, I hear these talk show hosts who write books about liberty and defending the Constitution, and then they call for arresting people that are, disagree with war. Again, liberty is so popular that these globalists are now trying to talk and speak like us, at least on the surface, which is another major sign of our victory. I'm not taking questions yet, bro. Um, continuing here, well, I'll turn into a free-for-all. Anyways, <laughs> continuing here, you all know what, again, five years ago, did anybody anywhere know what BPA was, bisphenol A? Out of thousands of different plastic combinations that they could come up with a formulation, these big mega corporations were 60 years ago, standardized and had oil companies give incentives for the chemicals to base most of the plastics that you get water in or cook TV dinners in, you name it, in a, in a chemical that leaches estrogen mimickers that accelerates puberty in women, gives them breast cancer, gives men prostate cancer, this is all admitted now, and feminizes men, hyperfeminizes women, reduces fertility in men and women. That's why you got five-year-old girls going into puberty now. One of the big reasons is bisphenol A. First it was girls go at 14, then it was 11, then it was 10, then it was nine. And it's like, well, six is the new 14 now. Uh, and we're just, oh, that's, that's completely normal. And I remember five, six, seven years ago, I remember 15 years ago talking about bisphenol A with doctors I was having on. And people were like, you're saying the government has a toxic chemical in my plastic. Let me tell you something. The FDA cares about me and you're a liar. I used to get calls going, I'm calling the police. There's no, I, how could you be allowed on this local station? There's no way they'd be doing that. I'm like, okay, do you have a daughter, sir? Well, yeah and she's in puberty at 10 years old. You're just angry that this happened. Don't be angry at me, get her off of it. Because when these girls go to the doctor, or your son when he's 14, his testicles haven't dropped yet. I'm sorry to get gross there, but that's what's going on. The doctors say, we're gonna give you these hormones to counterbalance this instead of telling you why you've got a problem. When, when breast cancer is up over 2,000%, the US leads the world. Before it was almost unknown, now it's like, it's like Christmas coming around. You've got your breast cancer. I mean, I've got family with it. It's horrible. It's, it's destroying us. And they never ask, hey, race for the cure. How about race for the cause? Because let me tell you, it's one thing when men in your family die, because they're men, it's sad they die. But man, it's horrible when women in your family, you know, are got people chopping on them and cutting on them or dying and been put in the ground because a bunch of pieces of murdering trash jacked them with a bunch of hormones to screw them up. And that's why I hate the globalist. Because I'm constantly thinking about all the stuff they've done to me and the stuff they've done to you. And it's time for Judgment Day. It's time for men to stand up and say, I don't care what you do to me. I'm coming for you and I'm gonna get you. So get ready.
It's just time to decide we're going to politically and intellectually stop your new world order into the ground, and we're going to start spreading the word. We're not going to even worry about results. We're going to start clobbering your ass. Excuse me. Almost a third of the way down one page. <laughs> Continuing here. So, BPA, just in the last five years, you go to Walmart, Target, whatever the grocery store is, the bottles you buy at the store, it's, hey, we're BPA free. Oh, hey, we're Pyrex glass. Just five, six years ago, they would do articles making fun of people saying it was a conspiracy theory. But actually, people actually went and read all the admitted literature, the universities. They're not all traitors. They're all scared. You know, Rob Dew's uh, brother is a graduate student at a university in Texas uh, to be a statistician. And uh, whatever the demographic deal is where you study um, uh, the elderly, oh, what's that called? Uh, geriatricus or whatever it is. But the point is, and, 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 and he came over to be on the TV show because he'd taken public big Pew research and other studies showing that Ron Paul was getting the least amount of media coverage and debates and negative coverage, but was also a front runner, the poll showed, and a big index of those. And when he went back to graduate school a week later, they called him in and said, you're not supposed to go out and talk in the media. And he said, well, this is a university. People go out who are graduate students and talk all the time. And they said, we don't want you to. You want that PhD? This is America. And he said, well, why? I just went and showed statistics from another big study. And they said, you're not going to stop any of it. You don't have any power. I mean, imagine the professor is just is so empty and so sold out. I don't want you going on a TV show because I'm a control freak maggot. That's, that's who we've got trying to tell us what we can say and do. How about shut up, you un-American, anti-human piece of trash, you shameful authoritarian that's so comfortable in your jackbooted thugism that you tell somebody they don't have a First Amendment? How about you shut up? How about you get out of our way? I mean, how much of this are we gonna put up? with when these control freaks get in our face and tell us what we can say and what we can do. I see these articles all the time where they, in the US, Canada, you name it, a child draws a picture of a gun and then they say, they go arrest the parents, there isn't even a law, and say, well, we had to, emergency situation, there might have been guns the kids could get to because the child drew an image of a gun. All of us here drew images of guns when we were a kid. It's all over TV. It's everywhere you draw it. You draw everything. It's a thought crime. But the way the system is trying to sell us on this idea that our speech is bad, I see articles every few months where English students write fiction articles in school or even college or historical about gun battles or the Civil War and the police are called. I mean, that's worse than 1984. This is what America is, where professors tell people, you don't have free speech, shut up. Besides, you're not gonna change any of it. It's this attitude by all these people that serve the system. They don't even like the system, but they have this attitude of you've gotta give up like I've given up. You've got to roll over like I've done. You've got to be a horrible piece of garbage. The blueprint to defeat the New World Order is to stop listening to their con game that we can't be freer. Now, I covered some of the solutions and some of the victories we're having when I was on the radio, but going back to fluoride for a moment, all over Europe, all over England, all over the UK, all over Canada, all over the US. Uh, just uh, how many miles away is Tampa, Pinellas County? Yeah. 90 miles from here, Tampa, Florida, beautiful city on the sea. That entire county, a million people. And they just brought in the government's own documents about fluoride being deadly poison and they voted to stop paying 
hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to put toxic waste agents into the water supply. And it's happening all over the United States and Canada and Europe. And listen, you start going to city council and reading the EPA documents that are everywhere with their own scientists, 90 plus percent of them three times have gone to Congress. They've gotten thousands of signatures of toxicologists, chemists, biologists saying this stuff is deadly poison. It's hundreds of chemicals under the name fluoride. It's, it's devastating. Here's the reports of cancer, bone cancer. You take it to them and you say, listen, I'm not going to be smiled at and laughed at by you, okay? Just because the lobbyists come in here and pay you a chicken feed, you know, $5,000 your campaign mayor, this is all, well, on average they give them, to buy, in the case of Austin, a million plus a year, just because they pay you 5000 you give them a million of our dollars to put their toxic waste in our water. I take it real serious that I've got to go through all these precautions not to, not to toxify my son and two daughters and my wife and myself. I don't think what you're doing is funny with all the bone problems and all of the early onset of joint disorders directly linked to fluoride. You stop laughing. I'm giving you a public tort, Mayor right now that I'm going to sue you for forced medication. I'm going to sue you for racketeering, for money to do this. Don't you laugh at me, you little criminal. Listen, that's not some tough guy response. These are evil people getting paid to poison us. It's totally evil. Let me tell you, giving them a tongue lashing is nothing. They should go to prison for what they've done. I'm telling you, any crook that'll serve this system is a crook. And you start going to the bars they're at, record them. You start following them around. You I mean, look, we're not playing games with these people, okay? These are criminals. These are scum. And I'll guarantee you, they're involved in other crime, not just the stuff they've made legal because they say so. It's time to get aggressive with them. It's time to shove cameras in their faces. It's time to say, stop killing us and robbing us, you little piece of trash. So I've gone over BPA fluoride. Look at homeschooling. Last number I saw, Again, just 12 years ago, they estimated there were 200,000 homeschoolers in this country. And that's the government's own numbers. Guess how many are estimated to be homeschooled or quasi-homeschooled now? They got a lot of homeschool systems where you go like one day or two days a week, so you can be part of sports teams and stuff, which I think is great, to, to private schools and systems. Guess how many now are homeschooled in a year? Four million. It's estimated in its exponential growth curve by 2020, more than half of U.S. school children will be either homeschooled or quasi-homeschooled. That's why the system is panicking, because we just put our kids on the yellow school bus, send them off for fluoride treatments and aspartame food and GMO, and just hand them over to the government, and the government's sitting there saying, oh, you drew a picture of a gun. We're going to arrest your daddy now. Oh, you're a four-year-old in Head Start. What's the gun? Daddy kills monsters with it. I saw it on TV. You're going to be with the CPS tonight. And of course, we know what they do to children, but <laughs> we're the good people. And you've got these teachers who just think it's normal. A lot of them, they're well-meaning. They think the state's good. And in America, when somebody draws a picture of the gun, the children go bye-bye to the pot-bellied pedophiles. Yeah, it's sick, and it's time to call them out. Hey, what are you doing taking all these kids when you're five times more likely in the Justice Department's own reports to abuse children? And you cover up for what you do. Again, it's time to get in their face. So, California and other states have moved to basically ban homeschooling. More people are pulling their kids out. Quite frankly, it'd be better your child had no education than be in a government training camp. But I know, 
They try to make everybody work so hard, so you got to be at work, both of you, so the state can have your kids. And if they got to be in there, just make it a game about teach them about authoritarian countries, teach them about Nazi Germany trying to take over people's kids from them, Soviet Russia, Communist China, Pol Pots, Khmer Rouge, Cambodia, the list goes on and on. And explain to your children what's really happening. And that's going on. My children, when they see propaganda now, recognize it because they were taught to recognize it and they instinctively know to trust me and my wife, not some stranger trying to get involved in my family. And that's another issue that we need to get to, and it's, it's, it's the attempt to inoculate. You know, record numbers of people are not inoculating their children, and you can debate whether the science of inoculation is useful, and it is. Um, there's no doubt if there was some deadly virus or bacterium that they could probably produce a vaccine that would give you acquired immunity. The problem is the major studies show that even if it was a good, clean vaccine, it begins to reduce your overall immune system in the future, just like antibiotics do. But hey, if you're dying of gangrene, it works great. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. The problem is the corrupt interests that run Big Pharma are eugenicists on record who have said that they want to reduce our world's population and who've been caught thousands of times adding horrible things to vaccines. That's the issue. They always try to argue Oh, you're against vaccines. You're against science. That's like saying, you're against all roast beef sandwiches. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm against this one that you just took a big crap in. <laughs> you like that one? Wrote that one on the fly. <laughs> I know there's some children here I shouldn't be doing. I do have more. I'm more myself a little bit when there's not the FCC and everything, but I mean, come on. I mean, the point is, all kids get what I'm saying with that. They understand what I'm saying. We could debate vaccines. If there was some deadly plague out there and they had a vaccine that was proven to, you know, help, and it might even have some side effects, let, let me make the choice. But don't get up on the news and say, people not vaccinating are going to cause you to die who've been vaccinated. Wait, you've been vaccinated? But me not taking it's going to make you sick? I thought the vaccine protected you. <clears throat> and I've done some digging over the years. Polio, meningitis, the list goes on and on. Measles, mumps, rubella. Do you know what the governments of Europe, the U.S., you name it, admit? Most of these diseases, including uh, the uh, smallpox, on record, look this up when somebody's pecking at you, telling you, you should care about your kid, you should give them this. Go look it up. Don't believe me. Most of these vaccines don't protect you, A, from what they say they're protecting. It says it on the insert, like the Gardasil shot. But B, they're the main spreaders of all the things I just mentioned. The number one spreader of measles, mumps, rubella, polio, meningitis, look it up, is vaccine reaction, where it actually gives it to you. Remember in 2002, on the heels of the government anthrax attack with the super weaponized anthrax on record now to shut down Congress and pass the Patriot Act, on the heels of that AIM strain directly out of the uh, Army Biological Weapons Lab, on the heels of that, I'm here pulling up the data, on the heels of that, they came out and said, we're going to give all the firemen, all the police, all the military, all the first responders, because it's not just the military we're going to force experimental stuff on now. It's everybody that works for the system. We're going to give you a smallpox shot. And all those people started dying of heart attacks from an autoimmune response, and they had to pull it back because smallpox actually started spreading. And it was in the newspapers, but a footnote. Yeah, you know, down five paragraphs. It was a small side effect, smallpox is spreading. It's not a big deal. People are dying, too. And I, I, I read an L.A. Times article where out of 14 million first responders of one type or another, EMT, police, fire, military, that's what they call first responders now, out of those first responders, 
took the smallpox shot. They were ordered to, outside of law. They said, if you want your job, I had police chiefs, fire chiefs on against it. They said, in 2002, they said, if, under the uh, emergency centers establishment acts, the new one where they want to forcibly inoculate, that was the uh, Model States Health Emergency Powers Act. Under that, they were telling them, you want your job, take this anthrax shot and this smallpox that are experimental. And, and, and the police, firemen, and others, fire, fire persons, went and did the research and came back and said, you can't order me to take an experimental vaccine. In fact, you can't order me to take any vaccine. And so basically, 96% of them didn't take it. Again, how's the new world order? Yeah, that's a solution right there. How is the new world order going to enforce all of this when their own enforcers are starting to wake up to them? Think about that. People are getting wise. When the feds put the underwear bomber on the plane two Christmases ago, our listeners were on board and saw the government put him on board. And they came on my radio show, Kurt Haskell, his wife's testimony as well, and said, we saw a sharp-dressed man order security to let him on without a, without a uh, you know, passport, without the proper identification at the gate. And then a month and a half later, after I was called a conspiracy theorist, the State Department Under Secretary Kennedy told C-SPAN, we were ordered by an unnamed U.S. agency to give him a visa and get him on the airplane. Right when they come out with the naked body scanners, again, that freaks the globalist out like nothing you can imagine, that once you start to get wise to them, all the momentum swings into the favor of humanity. So realize, we have been really slowly gaining momentum, struggling from the bottom up as the underdog. And more and more, they've got the money, the propaganda, the fear, but we've got right on our side, and we are starting to turn the tide. That is the blueprint to defeat the New World Order, is to recognize these scum for what they are. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Go to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv for the latest headlines and cutting-edge information.